Every precinct in Palm City has a file called the Lich. If there was ever a particularly awful killing that was so strange it seemed supernatural, it landed in that file. The Lich has been underground for years. Why is he popping up now? He's not human. I don't like this, Max. Welcome to Cancelled. Cancelled is recorded and produced by producer extraordinaire Mike Moody at the beautiful Permanent Record Studios here in Austin, Texas. Holy shit, this show. Uh, <laughs> Mike McRae is here. We're talking to Kate. Mike, how's things? Uh, very good. Very good. Yeah, I watched these last night. Yeah, you texted me last night like, holy shit. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes. Uh, I watched them this morning. I made a huge mistake of watching like 20 minutes of The Dark Knight before I started watching The Cape because I was like eating breakfast or whatever and oh, I wanted to be weird. able to like pay attention to The Cape. Man, that really stands in stark contrast to uh, the <laughs> horse shit that we're watching here. Uh, this is our first two-parter. Especially since like this is a particularly Batman-esque sort of uh, plot line that so. they've gone with here. Very much – Batman Begins, isn't that the one with the... Yes, the Scarecrow. Scarecrow with I mean, the it's same... Like the Scarecrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, our first two-parter, I'm assuming our last two-parter, I imagine. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're, there's not a whole... I doubt the next two episodes will also be two-parters. Uh, so it's called The Lich. That is our super villain's name. Question, does that mean anything at all? I think it was... Well, I mean, jumping ahead, it mm. it had to... Like, his skin disorder was something... Blah blah blah. It had Lord Lich Mor- in it. I guess did it. I mean, it was Morgellon something or other. But yeah, because it was. I guess it, that's it, it was, it was, it was, whatever it was translated into like the skin of, of the, the dead, dead or, or something. Yeah, and but, so, so it was something blah 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 Lich. Okay. I missed that I part because all I caught was him say like the staff here started calling me the Lich, and I was like, but that's not a word. And then also, <laughs> then how. So there's two. Oh yeah. So how the cops know that? How do the cops know? So the, oh, the, good question. You understand what I'm saying? So yes. the, so what? So it opens with uh, first off, oh, imme- man. immediately we see Tom Noonan. So I was like, oh well, he's a yes. Because Tom Noonan one is great, awesome, always. T- this has t- great character actors, Tom Noonan and Ileana Douglas, mm-hmm. who I both thought were underutilized. I would say both are barely in it. Ileana Douglas is in it for like four scenes. Yeah, it's she's not- barely there. Uh, I don't know if it was a favor. I don't know why she said this <laughs> show, but like, yeah, it seemed like you could have gotten a much lower level way actress of, for that yeah, role, right? Way out of place. It was uh, weird. But as soon as we see Tom Noonan, I think you get Tom Noonan for this role. And if you don't know Tom Noonan, you do. You You've do. seen him before. Uh, He's, Manhunter. I was, amazing. Uh, yeah, I was thinking uh, Manhunter. But also, always bad. You, we, if you see him, you're like, oh, well, here comes a, here comes a, a very scary serial killer. Right. Um, he, uh, I think you get him. For the misdirect, right? Yes. Because you're supposed to – this episode's kind of set up to make you believe that he's really the in-charge bad guy, but in fact but he's he the is, lich. He, yeah, but he is but, not. He is like under his control. A henchman. A henchman. So I get why you get him for that. Like you get a bigger name for the misdirect. But Ileana Douglas is just a nurse yeah. who like – as soon as she – so – all right. Let's get into the episode a little bit and set it up a little bit. Uh, we see <laughs> Tom Noonan goes to a uh, – he's like renting a truck or whatever from some place in the middle of the night. And he ends up blowing zo- – what is – as soon as he does, it's like, oh, zombie powder. Like there's no – I don't know why we're like supposed to believe it's anything but that because it's very clearly zombie powder. Uh, in the woman who runs the truck rental thing's place, she goes comatose. We find out shortly there later that uh, – Rollo dated her right. for a couple of <laughs> quite, months. Quite a coincidence. Uh, also, these, this episode is chock full of unnecessary coincidences, like across the board. Uh, he dated her a couple months ago, found out she died, went to visit her grave, and she her grave has been dug up. But turns out from the inside, she's dug herself out of this grave because she has been zombie powdered, right? Now, question <laughs> about this zombie powder. It would seem to me... That an inefficient delivery system for poison <laughs> is to just keep a big loose pile of it in your jacket pocket. I, I, I know. That you can just grab a pinch full of at any moment. It's not going to get into your skin or anything like that. He's got people are kind of. I know. I, I, yeah, it's like in the air around people. Is, yeah, like it only works unless a giant chunk of it is thrown right at your nose. <laughs> your like face like any residual amount is fine. At one point, Tom Noonan's holding the uh, chief of police, the ex partner. Uh, and he's waiting for another henchman to blow 
powder in his face in the, the black guy's face, but he's just behind the black guy. He would just also <laughs> have it blown in his. I don't <laughs> the the, uh, the the science of this powder I find real fucking silly. Um, I also have a quest- problem with the Rollo thing beyond the coincidence of it all. Why do they keep acting like it's the great love of his life? They briefly dated yeah, a yeah, couple yeah, yeah. of months ago. But they, they constantly – he's just like, it's me, baby. It's me. I'm here. Don't worry. Like she – I mean I'm sure she remembers you. You dated briefly but like – Also, he's like a little person uh, established as a pervert, yeah. is a carnival uh, performer and criminal. a criminal. Mm. This is just a nice lady who works like <laughs> yeah, she, the night shift. How did they meet? Like, how did this? That's a how did this even Car- to- karaoke at some point? He says. Oh, that's right. He says last time I saw you, you were singing karaoke. Maybe they both hang to- out a common interest or something, <laughs> and they just sort of got to know each other there. Um, we also find out later that Rollo is deeply religious. Yes, which is an interesting character trait for a horny criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of religious Im- imagery. In yeah, yeah, he has. A, there's a moment where later on he's like, "Oh, I have a higher or prote- like a higher power protecting mm-hmm. me." And he holds a cross up, but it's like, I guess you're also a sexual predator. <laughs> like, we know that about you for sure. Um, the uh, the overall story of the episode is that Fleming is trying, Ar- Ark is trying to purchase the port of whatever Palm I City. I have a or lot whatever. to say about this. <laughs> Please, he's trying to purchase the port ostensibly for business, but really because it's going to be easier for him to traffic weapons and shit in and out of this port, right? Uh, for some reason, that falls under the auspices of the of Richard Schiff, who's in charge of the prisons. Apparently, if he's like the also in charge of the prisons and port authority. That's right. all the same job, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so he's trying to put up a block here because he knows that Ark's bad and he doesn't want to sell. And the guy's like, uh, he's going to give him $7 billion. He's going to give the city $7 billion, right? So he goes to Orwell, says, look, I've been doing – I'm trying to figure out a way of legally blocking the purchase and sale of this port. Couldn't find anything. But what I did find was that that the land, the actual port itself belonged to this family, the Chandlers, who were like the founding fathers of this town and was never – they all died in a plane crash and nobody ever bought the land. So if there – they just kind of set up shop there. So if there is an heir, he would technically own the land and the city wouldn't be able to sell it. I um, I'm not a lawyer. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not a smart guy. No. But I, my ex-wife, is a, is an attorney that does trust and estates and inheritance stuff. Right. And the premise that <laughs> the port authority of this major American city is of unknown title <laughs> is the most <laughs> ridiculous thing that this show, which is about superheroes, <laughs> has put forth. They say it's that like is the, the du- I couldn't they wrap say, my fucking mind around. They that. say it's the second largest port in the country. It's huge. Who, it? Who knows? Who knows? We just set up, we just put some uh, fucking cranes there one day and decided to go. With right, it. I know. They're just like, well, let's start building uh, mega structures on the coast and see where the chips fall. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure this out down the road, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Also, it's not like. This was in the 1600s when maybe things were a little lax, right? Exactly. Right? This, it's 20 years ago it, yeah. at most. It, it's however old the Lich is, who's maybe 30, maybe, right? They said 1976. Oh, it wasn't the 70s. So, yeah, 1976 yeah, yeah. was the plane crash. Right. The, the, they had just given this baby yeah, up. Right. Which they're established. So even uh, also. It's called 30 years. Also. <laughs> so uh, an entire family died in a plane crash. Right. Okay. So – Let's let's say the parents and the children. Let's say there is no heir. There, right. there's a, okay, th- then what happens is not we don't know. Right. There are laws well, that this this will go to <laughs> their next of kin. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. The, even if there is no one, then it will be as cheated back to the state right. or something like. Uh, th- this whole idea is like maybe there's an heir to this whole thing. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. Like, yeah. This would have been so settled by the court. I would also like to add. Let's say there is an heir. You find him. Why would you suppose that he wouldn't just sell it to Fleming for seven billion dollars? He find, like let's say you're a random dude. You find out, oh shit, I actually own a port. I don't really know how to run a port. I'm not a port guy, but you know what I could <laughs> yeah. do? Sell it for seven right. billion dollars. And also, if if this heir is found to be in an insane asylum. 
Uh, I feel like his. <laughs> there would be a trusteeship. Like he'd he would have trustees. Sort of converters. Like they're not going to let an insane person fucking. Dis- well, we have no choice. This yeah. insane man runs the port authority. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More Ferris wheels. He's just a crazy man. I guess it's all Ferris wheels now. Okay. <laughs> oh, that may, that's very funny. So so. All of this is to say that Richard Schiff has found out that somewhere in this city there is an heir. This ba- she had a, he had a baby, but the baby was unaccounted for. But he found like a birth certificate or whatever for a Conrad Chandler. Yeah, he has. By the way, he's show, he's showing up to Orwell with the original birth certificate yeah, yeah, yeah. and the actual legal title right. or church <laughs> of the property. Of the fucking port. Sure, he just has it in his bag. Not photocopies that he's giving to. Her. No, no, he's giving her the original somewhere safe. Sure. Uh, to which she's going to put that out into the world to find out where like, – try to help – you know, she puts it out for Orwell to like – does anyone know who Conrad fucking Chandler is or whatever. So, so that's happening. Meanwhile, we've got this lich situation, right? And Tom Noon and the zombie dusted this woman. They've – this is maybe my favorite dumb part of this entire show. So uh, they have found her on a bus some fucking place and she's like does the bus go to the parade she's all broken and crazy right because she's been neuro she's been neurotoxined by the lich and has cr- climbed out of a grave right uh, and by the way her hair was slightly messy yeah she but, was a little dirty yeah that's it that's it um, <laughs> she uh, they, Max somehow puts her to sleep by just putting his hand on her by giving her the the Von Eric claw from fucking wrestling in the 70s he just puts his hand on her head and she goes from be, like trying to kill them with a piece of glass to just being unconscious and I have no idea how he, he goes she'll sleep and she's just asleep you can't do that you can't just invent a thing they have, they invent so many powers they in this do, fucking episode so here's my favorite part right so they take her back to the fucking carnival they're talking right and they're like and uh, fucking uh, Vince is like she needs a doctor because and they keep saying neurotoxin. They say it multiple times. Because he's seen neurotoxin it. neurotoxin also implies doctor to me. Oh, like uh, medical uh, attention. Oh, 100%. Not, not what's going to happen here, <laughs> which is he, – so, so, uh, so Max basically says, like, I've seen this before in uh, sub-Saharan Africa and in Haiti. It's a neurotoxin mixed yeah, with puffer, yeah. fin, puffer fish, whatever the fuck. Uh, he's like – so Vince like, she needs a doctor. And he goes, no, he doesn't need a doctor. He needs a surgeon. She goes – and Vince like, what kind of surgeon? And then the Indian dude comes through the curtain that they're standing in front of and just goes, a surgeon of the mind. <laughs> I love that because in the context of this world – he was just waiting behind that curtain <laughs> to make that entrance, right? He was just like, okay. But did he talk to Max and arrange that ahead of time? But he waited there for that specific moment to be like, all right, now I'm gonna this is I'm gonna really blow their minds with this one. Hold on. Uh, so what he's gonna do is use his hypnosis powers to get her out of yeah. being neurotoxin. Nope, it's not nope, – she, nope. she she hasn't been hypnotized, right? If it was a thing where – because they've set up hypnosis as a yeah. thing that happens in this yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. If she had been hypnotized and they need a better hypnotist to unhypnotize her or whatever, that makes sense. But this is a chemical fucking reaction. She right. has been neurotoxin. We need a doctor, not a fucking swami or whatever. And also, that only, I do enjoy very much that she has been neuro, – like you say, they say neurotoxin. They absolutely do a bunch because multiple times we see giant canisters with the word neurotoxin. Right, I know. On it. Just says it right on it. Just says it. Uh huh. So also, I love the fact that there's so many obvious things like that. Just label neurotoxin. Also, Orwell has the cape cell phone no, number. They, they <laughs> just the, said the, cape. the caller ID. She gets a text and a phone call at one point, and the caller ID just says the cape. <laughs> Uh, see now, if it wasn't, if it was done intentionally, like I'm laughing, it made me laugh really hard. And if it was done as a joke, I'd be like, "That's a very funny joke." Know, but it no. was not. That was a. It serious was a plot thing because someone else saw that it was phone. the case. That's Ex- how they exactly, yeah. exactly. God damn it, that made me laugh. I know, dude. Um, yeah, t- there's so much dumb shit like that in this episode too. So uh, what we find out. She she when they when they bring her back she says something about the lich and he, she's like the like she says something about the lich and uh, Vince tells us that every police precinct in the city has a file and in that file goes all the weird shit unexplainable murders cult shit ritual whatever and they call that file the lich right kind of cool kind of a neat I'm into idea. that I'm yeah. super into that yeah, idea yeah, like and uh, and then what if 
and the idea of like, oh, but what if the, all those things are connected in some way, right? And they aren't just a, a grab bag of crazy shit. It's like, oh, maybe the, and there's like rumors of a cult. And uh, Rallo says that he knew two guys at the prison that told him that they got hired to do a job for some, to steal some shit from a hospital for some guy who looked like he was dead. And when they fucked up, he cut a finger off of each of them and he doesn't fuck with voodoo and all this shit, right? So the police are aware of the lich. He's like, okay, maybe the li- I got to do some digging to find out about this lich. It's got to be Tom Noonan. Meanwhile, uh, Orwell gets a call from Ileana Douglas, a video chat saying, I can't hide this anymore. Conrad Chandler was put here as a baby and he's being held against his will at this fucking the orchard uh, mental institution. Right. And it was it's it, you know, it, and like, again, like the casting of Ileana Douglas was like skewed that thing because like, OK, well, this is clearly significant because I know who that actress is. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like when you watch Law and Order and they get to the point where like you get to reach a character actor yeah like, yeah yeah oh hey i know you from roadhouse i bet you're gonna be the <laughs> person they're gonna be yeah, looking yeah. at jim gaffigan shows up out of nowhere <laughs> right? and you're like yeah. you're probably gonna be a little bit more than yeah. absolutely and it's definitely that for sure uh, um so she is going to investigate this person that uh at the mental institution so we kind of have two stories going on mm-hmm. but we find out no or, not, do or do we or are they all the same story because she goes to visit this guy who not, I, I think is actually doing a good job as that role, whatever that weird the lich role is. The actor I think is good. Like yeah. he's like creepy and weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in a, a little indie movie I remember from like the early two thousands called Series Seven: The Contenders, which was this like super low budget but actually pretty good. I think a bunch of people that were in it kind of went on to do shit. I know the director would go on to direct a bunch of like prestige TV like Game of Thrones and all the shit uh, but it was like f- a faux reality show where seven people are picked from uh, random they don't have a say in it and then now you're on a reality show where you have to kill the other people and the only one left alive oh, wins oh did a pregnant woman yeah yeah, yeah 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 was yeah. that good I never I, saw that I remember but... I don't know how well it holds up it was 18 years ago but I remember at the time liking it very much oh cool and he's like one of the main seven on that show uh, so I remember the actor okay. from that I'm like oh this guy good for him he's doing stuff not doing much but like good for him uh, she goes to see him and he's this, he's in a wheelchair and he's like, oh, my legs don't really work that well. And as soon as you see him, I'm like, oh, well, you're a bad guy and your legs work just fine. Like there's, this is, <laughs> you've got the fucking, uh, uh, polio blanket over your fucking legs. Like I get it. You're going to stand up at some point. I didn't get it. You were, you're a little more, uh, uh. In, in tune than I am because oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't pick up on that. I didn't part. know he was going to peel his stupid face off. I didn't. Know. I didn't see that coming. I was wondering why his skin looked so weird. His looked, skin and why he was wearing lipstick. It appeared to me. He also here's what, I have a problem with Orwell in this moment. So she goes to see this guy who has been ostensibly kept against his will in a mental institution since he was a baby, and which I, was very confusing because I'm like, so clearly this rich family gave up this this baby, but like. Why a meant like? How do you know a baby is crazy? <laughs> very good like, question. That's what I was that's wondering. A very good question. Like, I didn't even think about this that. Baby's, yeah. <laughs> this baby's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it out of here! Like, what? <laughs> that is so funny. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> that's why I was so confused by all that. That makes so much sense. <laughs> uh, um. She's go so she goes to him and he's talking about how like oh you know he's been beat here and the beatings gave him like spinal problems so that's why his legs don't work and he's got tremors from this and whatever and he's like clearly weird um, but he's like drawing all these pictures and stuff of like the city and he's got all these newspapers everywhere and she, he keeps going like please don't touch that. And Orwell just keeps ignoring him and touching all his shit. <laughs> now, you've come in here as a – assuming this is a victim yeah. and a person in his mental institution. Every time he's like, he's like, oh, please don't go through that. And she's like, oh, what, these? And she just fucking <laughs> starts rifling through all his shit. I thought that was really fucking rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, I, that definitely bothered me. You can't tell a hot girl nothing, man. They're just going <laughs> to do what they do. She, um, so she's kind of talking to him. Meanwhile, they have psychosurgeried. The lady in the carnival that's been fucking oh. <laughs> toxined or whatever, <laughs> and uh, gotten clues out of her and uh, to yeah, where yeah, like yeah. Uh, where the lich is going to be or whatever, and they, it's an old abandoned train station. So he goes, he's like, we need to pol-, like they go down there, they find this truck. That got neuro labeled neurotoxin <laughs> delivery system or whatever the fuck. <laughs> they also uh, so they're in like an old train tunnel, right? And there's a truck coming down at them. Now the truck is 
a good distance from them. And then, like, its lights come on and shit, and it's coming at them. And they wait so long <laughs> to avoid this truck. And eventually, so, like, uh, Kate goes to one side. Max goes to the other. Two and of the three of them figure out that, oh, I can get out of the way of this, truck. you know, unilaterally right. moving truck. Yeah, it's in a tunnel. It can't go left or right. It's only going to yeah. go straight. So just little move guy hasn't, didn't put that together. He just starts running ahead of the truck because he thinks he can outrun it, I guess, with his little legs. Now, what happens to him? <laughs> Are we supposed to, like, is he hit by the truck? Because what we, the truck goes past him and they go, Rallo, Rallo, they run up. He's laying on the ground unconscious. They roll him over and they wake him up. And he's, they're like, oh, I thought we lost you. And that's when he's like, I have a higher power or whatever. But like, I, yeah, I don't understand they why he was show. unconscious. Did he get like? Are we believing he got hit by that truck? I think and he got hit by the, it off. Like he got hit by the truck and he fell under it and it just rolled over. I mean, it. I'll buy that part. But I then guess. also, if he got hit by a truck, I would imagine he'd be in worse shape than just sort of rolling over and being like, "Whoo, that was a close one." He's he's a tough guy. They they have established him as a as a bruiser. Uh, so they realize that we're going to need, like, they realize that there's a the parade coming. There's going to be a Founder's Day parade, and oh, they're going to attack the Founder's Day parade. With Which, all this again, nerd-nod. very Batman-ish. Super Batman-ish, right? So uh, he's like, oh, I need to, we need to get the parade shut down because it's the only way we're going to get, like, save the day or whatever. So he goes to his ex-partner, who, as far as he knows, is a villain. His only <laughs> interaction with them is villainy at this point <laughs> uh, for help. And again, and I know I've mentioned this in every episode, but these two, it is fucking prominent. (laughs) Can someone explain how no one can (laughs) recognize a man they've had decades-long relationships with? They are in the same car together. He sneaks up. The black guy, he gets in the backseat of the black guy's car. So when he gets in the car, he sees him there. And they are that close to each other. He's wearing half a mask and nothing. Nobody recognizes a voice. it is this phenomenon really comes to the fore. Infuriating in these episodes, it's infuriating. And also, I got annoyed because he tells uh, the black dude, he says like um, the twenty-eight-year-old chief of police, police. Yeah. <laughs> who's also in like a weird uniform as the chief of police. He's not yeah, wearing, like, a suit. Ar- yeah, he's yeah. wearing like an arc. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's wearing like a like a like a, I don't know a bat like a stormtrooper costume essentially. <laughs> and uh, he tells he tells the black guy, he's like, look, you got to stop the uh, there's a terrorist attack coming. Uh, you got to shut down the parade. And he's like, on your say-so, I don't think so. And then he goes, well, what if I told you it was the lich? And he's like pointing a gun at him until he says the lich. And he's like, oh, not the lich. And he like puts his gun away. And it's like, that's why you would – so you yeah. don't believe that there's possibly a terrorist attack coming. But you do believe that the boogeyman is involved. <laughs> like it's just fucking – it's so dumb. Um Whoa, wait, Slender Man's in oh, yeah, okay, oh, Holy up. shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't say werewolves. Uh, <laughs> so they go to – he's like, I can prove it. They go to investigate. They run into Tom Noonan. There's a little bit of a fight. They, they take Tom Noonan into custody. Meanwhile, we're back at the hospital. She reveal uh, – the guy in the wheelchair reveals himself to indeed be the lich. He peels off his mask, which is a, a human face, but underneath it it's all – Gross. I don't yeah. know. What it's just gross. It's got like some scabs. So he was blood. born. Yeah. So so he he was born with this weird skin problem right. where he looked like a dead. Like he had a dead skin. He looks gross. Is really all it is. is so that's why they. That's gross. why they gave up the baby. I don't understand why they gave it to a mental institution. Also, it's also fucking wild that it's the seventies. They have a baby with a skin disorder, and they're like, "Ew, gross! Throw it away." Yeah. Like it's not. You know what I mean? It didn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It's, this isn't like the Penguins backstory where they're like, "This is the thirties yeah, or yeah, whatever." Yeah. It's the seventies. They had doctors and shit mm. ointments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They didn't even try. The second yeah, he had a baby, they was like punt it out the fucking window. I know. You feel sorry for them. I you, do feel one sorry. of the villains they try to make you feel sorry for and kind of understand their motivation. For a little bit until he's, you know, a complete lunatic who's neurotoxicing people and then burying that. We find out that, like, the so there's, like, basically a big cult. But it's not a cult. Okay, but that's another it's, question I have. It's a, <laughs> so it's not really a cult because uh, theoretically all these people that are his yeah. followers have been neurotoxined, right? Yeah. So they're not following him because they believe in his message. They've just been brain poisoned and now yeah. they are his slaves. That's not a – that's, Except, a, that's, a, that's unfair to cults. At least cults, they earn that. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But I will also say this then. What about Ileana Douglas? She seems to be of sound mind and body. 
she can go against his will, his wishes. Like ideal, it would make sense that if he gives an instruction, his people have to follow it because they have been neurotoxin and now are his zombie. I slaves. think she uh, is converted. I think she is hasn't been neurotoxin. She right. is converted to like but this person's. Why? <laughs> like I, he hasn't presented any sort of like philosophy. I think uh, she just wants to fuck the weird, gross skin guy. I think she felt sorry for her. like she kind of helped raise him. She was like her, her, his protector, kind of in this institution. Yeah, and yeah, over yeah. time, like as he like he's clearly like a brilliant mind or whatever. Like mm-hmm. she sort of is she though? Other a, than that, he's figured out how to make these neurotoxins because he says at one point like a smart. He, he like kind of describes his origin. And he's like a smart boy so, yeah, finds where they the keep drug, the chemicals the and he makes he makes potions and blah blah blah. He has this little yeah. spiel that he gives, which was fine actually. But so, like, but she. My point is, like, she can. She doesn't have to follow his instructions because she. At one point, he. <laughs> so, for whatever reason, he neurotoxins Orwell, and now he's going to marry her. That's the whole second episode. Is he's setting up for this wedding, which I have a lot of quite problems with. <laughs> but at one point, they're going to have dinner. It's the first date, and he's like, "Call me old fashioned" or whatever, and. <laughs> There's a bowl of lemons on the table. And he's like, what are these? And she goes, it's a lemon centerpiece. And he's like, picks it up and smashes it. And he's like, I said the lilacs or whatever the fuck. (laughs) Yeah, that was so weird. It was very weird. But also what that just proves to me is like, okay, well, you're not under his spell. You, yeah. He said lilacs. You put lemons. You made your conscious of decisions here. So like you're of the people – you're the only one. Ileana Douglas seems to be the only one who's not just mind controlled into doing what she's doing. I think so. Um. So, I okay. So the end of the first episode, we basically is the big reveal that uh, he's the lich. Tom Noonan's just a lackey. They're gonna attack the parade, but they got to figure out how they're gonna stop him. Uh, at one point, though, he says, "When my they say when my mother saw me for the first time, she didn't stop screaming for two days." And I'm like, your mom's fucking fragile. Like I get oh, that you're yeah. gross, but whatever. There's uh, also also before we in the yeah, yeah, in the first episode, there's. Like a thing where, uh, so the cape's wife is working for is that, the DA. Well, that work. comes, I think that so he's she's working for the D, uh, the defense the public defense, right? Public and they convince her to go out to go out for drinks, drinks. yeah. And he does like an impression, impression of a judge, of a judge or whatever, that. and I, he sort of it sort of sets that up as like, oh, let's try to like impress her, like in a day when he puts his yeah, hand yeah, on yeah, her. Yeah. Well, she she's laughing right, and she puts right. her hand on his arm, and then he puts his hand on her hand, and she freaks out yeah. and runs away because she's like, oh wait, no, I can't, my husband or whatever. And I just want to say uh, from personal. Uh, yeah, doing an impression is not a way to a woman's heart. Uh, <laughs> you need to do a little, a little better than that. That doesn't work. Uh, the black chief of police goes to Fleming at one point and tells him we have to shut down the parade. There's this this threat or whatever coming. And he's uh, he's like, well, where'd this information come from? And he goes, we got a tip from the Cape. And he's like, has it ever dawned on you that the Cape is the terrorist? No. Because... And correct me if I'm wrong, black super uh, black chief of police knows your chess. <laughs> right? Isn't that the whole in the beginning when he sets up the other guy to be chess, he walks they're in the same train car where he pulls off the chess mask and they staple it to the fucking Vince's head or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like he knows you're the bad guy. So what is this I yeah. don't understand this idea of like it would be if he had just been like Oh well, this is a perfect opportunity. We can frame, let it happen. We'll frame the cape and turn public opinion against him or whatever. I could understand that argument, but the you can't convince him someone else is the villain when he knows you're the villain. Yeah, yeah, that's and he's also the villain. Like he's a bad guy. Well, this is one of those confusing things that happens when like there's like a, a new set of bad guys that's unrelated to the established bad guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're not necessarily doing the same bad thing, and you have to. Establish why, like, even these bad guys don't want these bad guys to succeed. <laughs> uh, he tells the black guy to arrest the cape, right? He's like, uh, he's like, I'm open to arresting the cape, but we got to shut down this parade. He goes, no, you're not open to it. You'll fucking do it or you're fired or whatever. So they set up the cape, basically, like, we found the truck. He goes to check out the truck. There's a bunch of art cops there. They arrest him, but he tells him, cuff him in the front. I want to see his hands, which is just not how police work. So as soon as he did that, I was like, oh, he's going to let him go. Like, I just kind of do that and he does he puts him in a car he's like i'm supposed to drive him to fleming and myself he lets him go <laughs> the whole time they're having very heated fights where you would definitely and like he's not even the cape isn't even like being subtle about like dropping hints about who he is at one point the black guy's like man all this zombie stuff's making me nervous and he goes why do you have anybody dead who'd be mad at you and it's like 
<laughs> oh, you mean oh, you mean Vincent Faraday? Wait, wait a minute. You sound like it. Like it would be the most obvious fucking clue in the world. Um, so we go into the next. Uh, this is a two parter. We've kind of been bouncing around a little bit, but as I said, the second episode is all about uh, the lich is setting up. He's going to marry Orwell. Yeah, that's the plot. The whole parade thing just sort of fizzled kind of out. Fizzles out pretty quick. We find out. What? That, well, they're going to find it, and they go, oh, it's like uh, we know the truck, but that now we, we have to figure out. They say basically like, uh, oh, we've got the security locked down. Nothing that's not supposed to be there is going to get in. Right. And they realize, oh, well, then the toxin's going to be on something that's supposed to be there. And they go check the floats, and that's where the fucking toxin was on one of the floats. So I think that's where they actually meet up with Tom Noonan or whatever. So right. Catch Tom Noonan's there. Okay. Um, but here's my problem with the marriage. Oh, go ahead. But just the whole thing where, like, they've set up, like – they're going to poison the parade. Yeah, thousands of people. Right. What you've done there in your writing is you have set up a set piece that's going to happen later on. Right. You expect to see some manner yeah, of yeah, a parade. Yeah, yeah, parade. And it's going to be thwarted. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't do that. They just no, we mentioned find a one, thing that you find, never see. They show one float for a second and that's right. the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they just go back. I don't know they if that was like a the, budgetary thing where they to had be, to say, it, like, it, no, it, we have to cut the whole parade I fucking thing. really think it is for this very reason, too. They go to the mental institution twice. They go the first time to look for him, and he's not there. <laughs> and then they, like, have to go interrogate fucking Tom Noonan to find out where he is. And they're like, oh, of course. And then they just go back to the same fucking I was so confused. the same gate. It's okay. the same gate. I was so confused. I'm like, is it a different place? No, it's the same fucking place okay. because it's the same gate. They walk up to the same gate. It's That's like right. they okay. clearly shot that on the same night. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> um, this but fucking show. Here's man. one of my problems with this marriage. They treat it. <laughs> they treat it like it's a real ticking clock situation. Like they have to get there before he marries her, <laughs> or else. Or it's legally what? It's a, you know, like it's not. It's like oh fuck, we missed it. Now she's got to stay married to the lunatic who kidnapped her. It's it's fucking insane. <laughs> it's, it's, it it really now. <laughs> yeah. The only way it makes any sense, and it's never said, it's not even implied. So I hesitate to even bring it up. But if the idea is that once they're married, he's going to consummate the marriage, then that could be a ticking clock. We've yeah. got to get there before he rapes her because she's by, – by the way, she has been neurotoxin and also with a paralytic so she can't move. Right. She's just yeah. there having all these hallucinations where she is seeing this like beautiful wedding day and the, there's a uh, – she's buying a dress and she's marrying Vince. The cape, yeah. She's marrying the cape and then her dad shows up. Now – Surprise. Can we play that for a moment too? She, so she's having these uh, uh, hallucinations, right? And so she's at this uh, uh, like beautiful restaurant, whatever the day. It's like before the wedding, and uh, she's like, "Oh, my father's your father's here to give you away, right?" And you see a man walking towards the camera, but his face is distorted from like the sun, mm-hmm. and then eventually he walks in to focus, and it's Peter Fleming. Was that supposed to be a reveal? Because we already know that, like, right? We already figured it out, but that's the first time that was explicitly they just said it. Said okay. Or shown. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was the reveal. That sucked. That's <laughs> fucking, that's yeah. fucking stupid. Uh, also, we find out her name is Jamie in these flashbacks, oh, right? right? They yeah, refer yeah. to her as Jamie, and, and that's like a, a that is somewhat of a reveal on that. Uh, the hallucination Vince calls her Jamie, and she's like, "Wait, you don't know my name." Like, how would you know my name is Jamie or whatever? Um, so that's like a hint to her that it's a hallucination. My problem with the hallucination, why is it just that she could just stop it? Like, every, you know what I'm saying? Everyone else has to have a fucking hypnotist take them out or whatever. Or, or like, there's all kinds of stuff that has to be done. She just kind of decides to not be hypnotized anymore. When she also has had a IV of a paralytic in her oh, the whole yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So it just doesn't make any I, – I don't understand not, that. Not any, yeah. That just didn't make sense to me. So – Not consistent. She, so he realizes that he ha, – like he has to figure – so they – so they, they he does a little bit of research, finds out that Tom Noonan, who they've arrested, was the like head of this mental institution. Right. He's got – oh, she's got to be at the mental institution. Oh, the other thing that happens at the end of the episode is he – that's when he calls uh, – the end of the last episode, he calls Orwell, right? That's when he sees the phone with the cape on it. <laughs> the cape. 
And uh, the lich answers the phone and is like, "Don't look for her or whatever. She's mine now." So he's like, "Oh fuck, he's got the he's got Orwell." So he goes, he does a little research, figures out that Tom Noonan's from this mental institution. That's where they have to be. So him and Max and Rollo go to the mental institution, beat up a couple crazy guys. Uh, I do like the line where they're like, uh, he tells them like, you know, heads up because we have no idea what's going to go on, what's going on in here. And and uh, Keith David's like, that's why we brought our dates. And they both pick up oh, fucking shotgun. sawed off shotguns. I was yeah. like, that's pretty badass. Um, then we're uh, not allowed. They're not allowed to use them because like, oh, these people have just been drugs. Don't don't shoot them. They're oh, innocent. Yeah, they've yeah, just yeah. been drugged, so they have to beat them up. I did think that moment where he's like, "Don't shoot. They've just been drugged." Beat the and then he proceeds to throw them. multiple of them down a flight of stairs. <laughs> easily break your neck. Uh, um, they go to the mental institution, but they realize, okay, he was here at some point, but he's gone, right? They go to the room. They find all the evidence or whatever, but he, he's nowhere to be found. So, But he's just upstairs or something? I don't know where he is. I was confused. But wait, there's a thing. reveal where later on he's, like, outside. After the lemon thing, he goes to pick some lilacs. And uh, there's, like, a – it's played as a reveal because, like, he's in the field picking these flowers. And it pans back and you see the mental institution and, like, the, the water. And it's, like, like crazy dramatic music starts playing. But I was like, what are they – he's I just picking flowers. I, don't, I yeah. didn't understand why that was, like, played like that. Uh, so he goes, fuck. So we have to go – he has to – Get more information out of Tom Noonan. He's got to go interrogate Tom Noonan because that he's going to know where the lich is, right? Is so, yeah. To do that, he ha- he's like, I, I think I have somebody that can help. So oh. he goes to the he goes back to the the son and tells the son he needs to speak to his mom. Right? And the son goes inside and says, "Oh, hey, the cape's here. He wants to talk to you." She's like, "All right, whatever." Blah blah blah. She tries to blow him off. She's like, "Fine, I'll go to the roof." Goes up to the roof. The cape's there. The only good thing she does in this entire episode is be like, you, go inside. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, he yeah, like, yeah, yeah. freaks out because, like, are you fucking with my son? Like, yeah. her, his ho- her, his father just died. Like, what kind of piece of shit are you? Yeah, that was pretty. I, I like that. That was a real reaction. moment. Yeah. Until he then uses the cape to grab the comic book out of the kid's hand, does a smoky disappearance, reappears on the other side of the roof. And that is all the convincing she needs. She's like, "Oh well, he must be an actual superhero then. I should probably, I should probably listen to him, um, and I should also probably ignore the fact that that is clearly my husband in a Halloween costume." Uh, um, that it, it not the changing height, his voice. Nothing. nothing. It's just you're. It's you. Like it, it'd be like if you pulled your hat down over your face, and I'd be like, "Where the fuck did Mike go?" I can't. It's just so stupid. Do you um, like, like, if you just heard. Like Maris's voice, I would know it like, immediately. You, yeah, she could be behind a curtain. You couldn't like, see oh, anything. That's my girlfriend. Yeah, I would have to. I just know her voice. You just know their yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm not. And like we've been together five years or whatever. But like we ha- we're not married with a seven year old. Like you, they've clearly even spent more time. Yeah, together. It, it's insane. The idea is just it's so ridiculous. Dumb. But so he held, uh, including. So let's go on to ridiculous ideas. He's like, look. You've got this guy. The police have this guy in custody. You have to sneak me in so I can interrogate him because thousands of people are going to die and they've got this hostage and whatever. So she goes to her boss, the lawyer who was trying to flirt with her the other day at dinner, and he's, she's like – she goes, so look, I'm going to tell you something and I need you to hold off your judgment until you hear me out entirely. And he's like, okay. And then the cape jo- drops in out of nowhere. Mm. But like not all the way. That was what was weird to me. They're in like a parking garage. So he's like on kind of a ramp so mm-hmm. above them up here. But how far could he have possibly – like, where did he come from? <laughs> it is played in that he landed because he makes a noise like yeah. he landed and he's, like, doing the superhero pose. The guy <laughs> looks up like, oh, what the fuck is that? But, like, you're just in a garage. I don't – anyway. He tells, like, look, you got to sneak me into this – inside to the police. Like, your client – you're representing this uh, Tom Noonan. I need to talk to him, blah, 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 terrorist, blah, blah, blah. People are so immediately willing – to go along with the whims of a crazy man in a costume. Mm. Imagine you're a, a fucking lawyer, a dude in a costume with smoke bombs shows up, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll throw away my entire career to sneak you into a police station. It's insane. The, well, they were somehow able to – the cape was able to convince his wife of the stakes, and then she was able to convince the lawyer of the stakes that I, all the thousands of people are going to die. I guess – but also, uh, there is a moment where he tells, like, the, the one thing that the lawyer does say is, like, look, I don't trust Ark either. So, like, I like kind of yeah, buy that a little bit. But then what I really don't buy is how he is able to – so he is in a locked interrogation room with two guards standing on either side of the Which door. Which, by the way, he's just in – like, is that where they keep him? I don't know. The interior, that's they don't what put I was him wondering. in a cell like, or anything? Not a cell. It's just, no. you live in this room now? I guess. 
They've got two guards on either side of the only door that goes into this interrogation room, right? The lights flicker, and then the cape is just in the room. <clears throat> yeah. The lights don't even go all the way out for, like, a beat. <laughs> they flicker. I contest that even if it was pitch black, I would notice if someone walked next to I'm If I'm standing next to a door <laughs> and someone walks past me to open said door, close said door, I would hear that at least. <laughs> I, the, the, the darkness doesn't affect that at all. Well, you, Chris, you weren't trained by the Carnival of Criminals <laughs> that's, or whatever. That's very you, you true. You just don't have that training. You are correct. I am not. Uh, so he goes in and threatens – he's like – threatening to beat up Tom Noonan. Tom Noonan's not going for it. Then he lets off some, like, flash paper in front of his face. And then the <clears throat> the wife and the boss are watching through this two-way mirror, and you're like, did he just hypnotize him? How the fuck do you know what that looks like? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, he puts a little, like, flash paper in front of his eyes, and I thought, like, oh, he's just trying to, like, wake him up, like, or snap him out oh, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. No, he that was him hypnotizing him, and our DA knows what that is. Like... <laughs> Uh, and he hypnotizes him and gets some more information out of him and finds out he's just at the mental institution. So they just go, go back, back there. It oh, just doesn't make any sense. And there maybe it's like supposed to be like a tunnel or something. I don't – it didn't make any sense something at all. Something was very – They literally are back at the same gate they were before with the shotguns. And this time Vince is like, hey, you got to leave the dates behind. We don't know where Orwell is. A stray shot. You could hit her or whatever. I guess. What we also find out is that Tom Noonan, when he drugs you – to determine if you're, like, good enough to be in his cult or whatever, you're buried, right? Yeah, right. And, like, 30% of the people he doses dies from the – either it either turns you into a slave or kills you. And he buries you, and you either come back out of the grave reborn as one of his slaves, or you just fucking die on this ground. Now, I'm thinking maybe what we were supposed to see on that big reveal when he's outside is, like, a bunch of grave plots or something, but I didn't see any of that. And also, yeah. he appears to have about – 12 slaves? There's not a lot of extras. Yeah. You, know? yeah, 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 you yeah, would think right. there's going to be like a there's ton an of – like an army of crazy people, right? There's at most like seven. At one point, they have the actual ceremony for the wedding and there's like four people there. There's a, <laughs> there is a priest who is conducting the ceremony. Yeah, clearly, who seems lucid. Like he can talk and things. I don't know where that guy came from. Uh, but – <laughs> they have this. Fucking... Everyone knows that guy who loves officiating weddings and was offering to do it all <laughs> yeah, the time. Yeah, That's yeah, probably yeah. who he is. He signed up online. All right, I'll do the zombie one. That's yeah, you got to yeah. start somewhere. <laughs> uh, um. So again, Orwell has somehow managed to just un neurotoxin herself. Uh, at one point, while she's in the dream, in like the hallucination, she cuts her hand, and she's like, "No pain. This has this can't be real, or yeah, whatever." Yeah, yeah. They're having the ceremony. The lich goes to kiss her, and she goes, Vince. And he's like, who the hell is Vince? Which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> like how jealous he got out of nowhere it was so weird to me. Uh, yeah, it never occurred to him that she might not be into this. <laughs> no. Well, there's a lot of scenes of him, like, having a both a one-sided conversation with her while she's kind of mm -hmm. neurotoxin or whatever, where, like, He's responding to things she's saying, but she's not actually saying them where it's like, oh, honey, I know I understand you're scared, but, like, you'll be safe. I'll keep you safe. Like, whatever. Also, during these sequences, he – it's unclear. Did he put the mask back on? Because his face Partially. is a different, like – He has bits and pieces yeah. of the mask back on. It's like um, like if you see somebody in a behind-the-scenes thing on, like, a movie, like a DVD making of yeah. where they're getting the prosthetics put on. He's, like, part of the yeah. way into that process. It, yeah. It so was, that, I didn't understand that. that was un, that's unclear, so I'm visually confused as well. He sends a bunch of fucking – crazy people after they beat up a few more crazy people it's whatever there's a bit of a fight between now here's a they okay again they just start throwing new shit into like when they need it for convenience uh the cape starts fighting him and he is like brushing it off like it's nothing and then he goes like uh one of the con one of the benefits of my condition, I feel nothing. Oh, and he, like, cuts his hand with a razor blade, but he doesn't react because he feels no pain, which is just dropped in at minute 40 <laughs> of the second episode of a two-parter. Right. That is never mentioned before. He actually seems to be in quite a bit of pain previously to this. Uh, and then I also would like to say... So why does that mean you're impervious to the force of a blow? Like, I understand it doesn't right. hurt you, yeah, but yeah. he, like, gets full-on drop kicked by the cape <laughs> and just stands there like it's nothing. 
That doesn't just because yeah. you don't hurt doesn't right. mean you wouldn't get knocked over. Yeah, exactly. You're still subject to the laws of physics. It's so stupid. <laughs> yes, I had the same thought. It, yeah, that just didn't make any sense. Uh, uh, to which uh, the cape says, "Like uh, when you wake up, tell me if you felt this." And he oh, capes yeah. a dresser on top of him that knocks him out. I guess and like a really roundabout way to take someone out. Also very anticlimactic. Ca- yeah. Also, just cape him. Throw him against the yeah. wall or whatever. Like you didn't. It wasn't cooler that you did that. Right. It wasn't like more <laughs> interesting. Um, we are then also. There's a couple little things here uh, when she's hypnotized, when she's uh, hallucinating that her dad and it's Fleming or whatever is coming to give her away. They ha- he's, she's having an argument and she's like, "There's a door." She keeps going like, "What's on the other side of that door?" And she goes, "Where's mom?" And he's like, "Well, that's where mom's where she always is or whatever, uh, or where she's always been." So they're setting up some reveal of something he's done. He killed her. He killed her or locked her away or something, right? I thought for a second it would be cool if, like, Ileana Douglas was her mom. Now, I know it doesn't make any fucking sense, but nothing on this show makes sense. So, like, it they could like something those writers would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I just like Ileana Douglas, so, like, yeah. put, more, put her in, like, give her more to do. They give her nothing to do. She, sh- she, she gets all jealous. She gets very jealous of her. And he tell, like, at one point, he tells her to, like... After he gets mad at her for saying Vince's name during the wedding ceremony, he tells Ileana Douglas to shoot her up with 20 cc's of the paralytic and then put her in the hole outside. Um, so she's – this was another – so she's uh, so she's laying there all fucked up, uh, paralyzed or whatever, and she comes to shoot her up. And, she, and Ileana Douglas is like, uh, you trollop, why don't you get your own man or whatever she says. Yeah. It's so fucking weird. And also the meanest thing anyone's ever said, he tells Ileana Douglas at one point he's like – I'm almost a married man now. It's inappropriate for an old woman to be living oh. with newlyweds. So after the ceremony, you gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, was like, cold. That's cold, even for a villain. That's fucking mean. An old woman. That's harsh. <laughs> uh, so she's gonna inject her, and fucking uh, Orwell just wakes up, grabs her arm, and is like, says something, some fucking one liner that I don't remember. Head butts her, sticks her in the neck with the fucking needle. Right? They keep, by the way, they keep like uh, zooming in on her hand while she's in these yeah, yeah, trances, yeah, yeah, like yeah. implying that she's about to do something or like use. I guess. I don't, uh, but I they didn't never. I thought they were just kind of showing her wedding ring or whatever, but like that didn't make any sense either. Yeah. I don't know. It was all that didn't make any sense. But what really didn't make any sense is so she gets up, she head butts Ileana Douglas, she sticks her in the neck. Ostensibly, she is out of the hallucinations, out of the paralytic, whatever. She's clearly of sound mind, right? Yeah. We cut to the fight scene. He beats up, knocks her, locks that dude out, tells them to tie up the, like, knocks out the list, says, hey, tie her up. I'm going to find or I'm going after, I wrote it down. She says, I'm going after Julia. He says that out loud. I'm trying to find it. It's uh, Julia, I think his name. It's definitely not Jamie. He says another name. He says, like, where is it? Uh, it doesn't feel pain. I'm going after Julia. And I'm like, well, who the fuck is Julia? I don't know. Is that his wife? But she's not there. He says that sentence. I wrote it down. It makes no sense. Oh, weird. So he knocks it's her. A giant error. Just a weird mistake in this show. <laughs> knocks him out. They tell him to tie up. He goes running into the next room where Ileana Douglas is laying on the ground. And then for some reason, so is Orwell. She's just unconscious again. I... And he, like, wakes her up, and she's, like, Vince, and, like, she's kind of half hallucinating, half yeah. not, and she's, like, it's really you this time or whatever. But, like, she was just fine. She just headbutted Ileana yeah. Douglas and saved herself, so why is she now unconscious again? Maybe that th- that action expended all of her energy to, to but, do that. But show yeah. that. Yeah. Give me something. Uh, um, they th- so that's – they, they beat the lich. They take her back to the carnival of crime. They give her some tea or whatever. She's waking up, and he says, "Like, uh, uh, basically, oh well, he's at you know, we, t- we t- again they took him to jail because they just have that power. Oh, yeah, again. yeah, yeah. They tied him up and took him to jail. Um, <laughs> with what? By the way, there's no proof. They have no evidence. Yeah, they don't have can't connect him to the. He toxin. doesn't. He doesn't even have a proper identity. Yeah. I mean, as they've set up, like they don't even know who he is. But." They do – well, she says in the – when they're – before he fought, reveals himself to be the lich, she says something along the lines of like, we've got this document. Your DNA test will bear out that you're the child of the cha- – like we can exhume them and do a DNA test. Right, them. yeah. So they go back. She comes to – they explain that you know, they took the lich to jail um, and that even though he is in jail – he still technically owns the port, so they can't, the city can't sell it to. 